Lux presents Hollywood. The Lux Radio Theater brings you Joan Blondell, Alan Ladd, and Laird Krieger in This Gun for Hire. Ladies and gentlemen, your producer, Mr. Cecil B. DeMille. Greetings from Hollywood, ladies and gentlemen. I was looking the other way when Paramount released this gun for hire. I thought it was just another gangster picture. Then I heard people talking about it at lunch in the studio commissary. Letters began to come in from you, asking why we didn't broadcast it. In self-defense, I saw the picture and discovered that it is not just another gangster picture. It's a prime example of how to maintain suspense in a motion picture or any other kind of drama. I discovered, too, just why this gun for hire made a new star overnight. His name is Alan Ladd. He's here tonight to co-star with Joan Blondell, and he brought another gifted member of the film cast with him, Laird Krieger. Alan Ladd has just finished a new picture at Paramount called Lucky Jordan, but he won't make another for some time to come. We'll tell you why later. This gun for hire casts Joan Blondell as a hostage, a very lovely hostage, held prisoner by a gangster named Raven. That's the part Alan Ladd plays. As an adventure story, it's on the top rung of the ladder, and as a drama of character, it sprung a few surprises on Hollywood. It takes all kinds of plays, from comedy to drama, to make a good theater. But good plays all have one thing in common. They get as much applause from a housewife in Omaha uh, from a stenographer in New York. And it's that transcontinental appeal that this theater depends on, both in plays and in Lux Toilet Soap. Beauty is among the products of every state in these United States, even though it may not be listed in the geography books. If you examine the list of hometowns where all of Hollywood's lovely stars come from, it proves the point. They cover the country from the Atlantic to the Pacific. And since Lux Toilet Soap always follows in beauty's footsteps, you'll find that from ocean to ocean, too, and at most of the crossroads in between. Now the curtain goes up for a thrilling drama, This Gun for Hire, starring Joan Blondell as Ellen, Alan Ladd as Raven, and Laird Krieger as Gates, with Jack LaRue as Michael. A shabby rooming house on the San Francisco waterfront, a man climbs the creaking stairway to the second floor. On the dimly lighted landing, he stops for a moment and glances back down the stairs to make certain he's not been followed, then moves slowly toward a door. His finger reaches for a bell. At last, the door is opened on a chain. A half-hidden face peers at him through the opening. Yes? What do you want? Is your name Baker? What do you want? I was told to come here. You were supposed to give me a letter. Who sent you? A fellow named Gates. Wait a minute. All right. Come in, my friend. <laughs> Just wanted to make sure there was no mistake. Sit down, friend. Well, we got company. Yeah, get the gentleman a drink, Pearl. Sure. What do you have, mister? Nothing. We're having some coffee ourselves. Bring another cup, Pearl. All right. What is this, Baker? You're supposed to be alone. Oh, Pearl's my secretary. Don't worry. She's all right. Well, did you bring the money? It's in the briefcase. Ten thousand dollars? Ten thousand. Where's the letter? I've got it. Don't be so impatient. What did you say your name was? I didn't say. Well, I'm funny. I always like to know who I'm dealing with. It's Raven. Thank you, Mr. Raven. You know, it's lucky they sent you today. By tonight, that letter would have been on its way to Washington. That would have been too bad for your boss, wouldn't it? Especially that little part about the formula. But for $10,000, I'm willing to forgive Mr. Gates anything. Even that nasty little word he used about me. Blackmail. I don't know anything about it. You wanted a letter. You mean you don't know what's in it? Oh, you should. Then maybe you could get $10,000, too. <laughs> 
Here you are, see? Addressed to Senator Burnett in Washington. Subject, the preparation of bromine, formula attached, and a few remarks concerning Mr. Willard Gates. I even had the stamps on it. Air mail. Give me the letter. The, uh, money, please? I was told to get the letter first. Very well. Here. Okay. You're not a very trusting soul, Mr. Raven. But I am, you see? Yeah? Well, that's great. You... You... Oh. What happened? What? You... You shot him. You killed him. I said he'd be alone. Too bad he wasn't. No. No. No, don't! No! Oh. Chemist and woman murdered. Two dead in mystery killing. Yes, it was nicely handled, my boy. I compliment you. Yeah, I'll take my cut now, Gates. Taught Mr. Baker a lesson in morality, didn't you? Ugly people, blackmailers, only one way to pay them off. Sure you won't have a Sunday with me, Raven? Marshmallow. Very good. All I want is my cut. I'm broke. You got the letter you wanted? I want money. Oh, yes. You're through with this, mister? Just a moment, young lady. There's still some marshmallow left, if you don't mind. Just leave the dish, please. I will, if you'll let go my hand. Oh, it's a lovely hand. Dainty and sculptured. Yeah? I'll bet you read palm. I'm an expert. How'd you guess? I guess. (laughs) Yes, Raven, my boy, my client is most grateful. He really needed that letter. I need the thousand dollars. Where is it? I have it. It's in this envelope. But I don't advise your counting it at a soda fountain. Hmm. Your boss must have plenty of letters, Gates. Who is he? Oh, he's very shy. I couldn't discuss him. Hey, what is your line anyway? You're not a finger man. I'm shy, too. Do you have a peppermint? No. My boy, I suggest you don't open that envelope here. Is there a thousand dollars in this? Certainly. They're all tens. You didn't expect a thousand ones, did you? What's the matter? Don't you trust me? Who trusts anybody? Direct from the bank, as I promised. And all new, huh? Yes. Though I see your point, of course. If the bills were bad, you couldn't very well complain to the police, could you? I'm my own police. What do you mean? What would you do? First, I'd find out who you're student for. The shy boy. Then I'd give him what I gave Baker. No, no. I can't stand violence. Then I'd whittle off a little of that blubber you carry around on your stomach. Such a warped sense of humor. Oh, I I forgot. Here, Raven, a little gift from me. Two orchestra seats to the best show in town. (laughs) I ought to know. It cost me plenty. That's my one vice, backing leg shows. Here, two on the aisle. No, thanks. Oh, go ahead. Take your girl. You must have a girl or a friend. Why? No, Live alone, work alone. Uh, Have a peppermint? No. Excellent for the digestion. Uh, Raven, tell me something. How do you feel when you kill a man? I feel fine. (laughs) Really? Well, uh, I'll have to be going. Goodbye, Raven. Be good. Gates. Oh, send him in. Lieutenant Crane. Yeah, sit down. I'm Willard Gates, Nitro Chemical Corporation of Los Angeles. My firm wants to know what the police up here are doing, if anything, about the man who robbed our paymaster. We're working on it, naturally. He's been reported here in San Francisco. Don't you know that? Yes, of course we know it. That's why I'm on the case. I'm from the Los Angeles force up here on my vacation until this happened. Well, I hope you can get some results. It's been a week now since the robbery. The stolen bills are all new and all tens. Why hasn't an arrest been made? I'll tell you why. Because the man may not even be here. All we can do is wait for him to pass one of those hot bills. Now, if he does that, we've got him. I hope so. 
You know that Mr. Brewster, the president of Nitro, has offered a reward. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. 5000 for a 20000 bundle. <laughs> That's kind of unusual. Is it? Well, it's just because Mr. Brewster is so upset over it. Well, it's his dough. Remember, we want him. Dead or alive. Preferably dead after what he did to our paymaster. And quickly, too, or we'll go higher up. Good morning, Lieutenant. Go milk a duck. Hello? Hello, Mr. Brewster. This is Gates. No, I'm still in San Francisco. I have the letter you wanted, Mr. Brewster. And the formula. Yes, I think our troubles are over. A man named Raven got it for me. Oh, no, 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 I wouldn't worry about him. The police here are very cooperative, Mr. Brewster. I don't believe he'll even have a chance to talk. Yes, I'm coming back tonight. What? Well, there's someone I'd like to see here first. Well, it's a girl. A theatrical agent wants me to see her act for my club in Los Angeles. Oh, but I'll be in the office in the morning, Mr. Brewster. Goodbye, sir. Well, what do you think, Mr. Gates? The girl can dance, can't she? She's very clever and very lovely. She'd fit right into your Neptune club, Mr. Gates. You can hire her for 150 a week. What do you say? <laughs> I say yes, by all means. Now you're talking. All right, Miss Graham, that's enough. Well, how'd you like it, Joe? <laughs> I'm your agent, honey. I always like it. What's more important, Mr. Gates here likes it. You're hired, Ellen. Yeah, what for? Neptune Club, Los Angeles. I'm Willard Gates, Miss Graham. I own the Neptune Club. Your act is very charming. Thank you. I wonder if we two might have dinner together tomorrow night in Los Angeles. Dinner? Well, I don't know. Now, if you're going to work for me, Miss Graham, I think we ought to get acquainted. <laughs> well, all right, Mr. Gates. Here's my card. I'm leaving for Los Angeles tonight. Oh, call me in the afternoon sometime. Okay. Thank you. And thank you, Mr. Fletcher, for digging her up. For 10%, I'd dig up my wife's mother. <laughs> uh, well, uh, tomorrow night, then. Tomorrow night in L.A. Goodbye, Mr. Gates. Bye. Bye, Mr. Fletcher. Yes, so long. All right, Miss Graham. He's hooked. Go change your clothes. Look, Mr. Fletcher, I don't get this. Come on, we've got to see somebody right away. Now, wait. You're no agent, I know that. All of a sudden, you take a big interest in me and tell me I ought to work for Gates. Well, that's all right with me, but I want to know what goes. What's it all about? Talk takes time. We haven't got it. Hurry up, get dressed. Come in. Uh, come in, Fletcher. Right on time, I see. How are you, Senator? This is the young lady I told you about. Miss Graham, this is Senator Burnett. Senator? Oh, so you're the mystery. Oh, no mystery about me. Just a hick lawyer the voters got stuck with. <laughs> Did uh, Miss Graham get the job, Fletcher? And I think Gates is hooked. I shouldn't wonder. I am, too. Oh, now, Senator, I have a boyfriend. And she doesn't mean me. Well, goodbye, Senator. I don't think you need me any longer. Well, thanks, Fletcher. So long, Miss Graham. Yeah. Well, Miss Graham... You look a little puzzled by all this. I am, and it's not just a little. Well, I'll try to clear it up for you. You know about my committee. Hmm? You read the papers? Well, yes, but I... I well, I... how about your history books? Remember Benedict Arnold? Sure. The All-American Heel. <laughs> yes. Well, there's a handful of those heels in this country today. We are trying to expose them. It's okay by me. My committee thinks Gates is one of them. Him? The nightclub angel? Well, in the daytime, he's an executive of the Nitro Chemical Corporation in Los Angeles. In between times, he's been seeing men who are suspected of being foreign agents. Yet our investigators can't turn up anything definite. And uh, that's where I come in. Yes. Will you give it a try? Well, it isn't exactly like deciding to go to a beauty parlor. Oh, worried about the boyfriend? Well, I don't know what he'll think when he sees me with Mr. Uh, 555. <laughs> I don't either. Uh, by the way, uh, who is your boyfriend? Is uh, he here in San Francisco? Uh, he is now, but he's from Los Angeles. As a matter of fact, he's in the police department there. Lieutenant Michael Crane. A police lieutenant? Mm -hmm. uh, well, Miss Graham, this might seem strange, but if you go through with this, I wouldn't want you to tell anybody, not even your lieutenant. Now, that might be tough. He's a pretty fresh guy. Uh, do you think you can handle him? Sure. What do I do, Senator? <laughs> Yeah, who is it? It's me, Annie. You want me to clean up your room, Mr. Raven? Yeah, come in. 
minutes after 2 o'clock, Mr. Raven. I tried all morning to get in here. Well, you're in here now. Go ahead and clean up. That cat don't help me any. Here, cat. Come on. Come on, here's your note. There ought to be a rule against cats in a boarding house. Now, look what he's done. He knocked over the milk. Get out of here, you dirty cat, you... Let that cat along. Oh, take your hands off me. Don't ever touch that cat, do you hear? You're hurting me. Let go. Go on, beat it. Cat, look at my dress. You ripped it, you see? Beat it, I said. You ought to buy me a new one. Shut up. Here's ten dollars. Now, get out. The least you can do. You and your cat. Get out. Get out. Come on, cat. Come on, I'll get you some more milk. Oh, listen, Alan, what's this about a new job? I don't have to leave San Francisco yet for a week, maybe. Why? Why, it's perfect. Except for one thing, Mike. I'm going to Los Angeles. But I don't. Hello? Lieutenant Crane, Sergeant Wilson is here, and he wants to... I'll see him later, and don't bother me. What do you have to go to Los Angeles for? I told you, Mike, a job. That was my good news. I thought we'd be down there together. Well, uh, how long are you going to be there? I'm not sure yet. I'm I'm leaving tonight. Look, sugar, <laughs> what does it take to get you to darn my socks and cook my corned beef and cabbage and, and sort of confine your magic to one place and... One customer. Oh, Michael, I would have died if you'd let me go away without saying something. I want my guy, Mike. I want a home and some kids. Well, honey, you've got your guy, but uh, I understand kids take time. <laughs> well, uh, we'll get married Sunday. How about it? Mike, I'd love to, but my job, I, I, I can't quit on them. Why not? Listen, darling, it isn't... It, it, well, it's not really the job. It's, it's something else. I'll marry you the minute you get to Los Angeles, but it must be there. Why? I can't tell you why. Well, this is a fine start. Michael, listen. Hey, Mike. Look, Wilson, not now, please. This can't wait. One of those hot bills was just passed. A new 10? Yeah, in a dress shop. Who passed it? Some girl. A guy named Raven gave it to her. He lives at the place she works. Got the address? Sure. Well, get some men over there quick. Okay. Hello? Michael. Hello, get me Dolan. Hurry up. Michael, I'm leaving on the 7 o'clock. Southern Pacific, now, please. Yeah, 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 if I can. So long, Ellen. Hello? Hello? <laughs> How'd they find out? Please, Mr. Raven, let me alone. How'd they trace me here? You're hurting my arm. Cops all over the place. You got them after me, didn't you? Mr. Raven. Come on, get out in the hall. Take the second floor, Dewey. Okay. The rest of you stay here. Now get in that phone booth. Mr. Raven. Get in that phone booth. All right, now stand in front of me so they can't see. You hear? Yes, but... Now lift, lift the receiver. Pretend you're talking to somebody. Yes, sir. Say, say hello. Say hello, Miss Stewart. Hello, Miss Stewart. Louder. Tell her what's up. They're after Mr. Raven. Why? Because, because he passed a stolen bill in a dress shop. What do you mean, stolen? You ought to know. Talking to the phone? How'd they know it was stolen? Do you have the number of the bill? Yes, Mrs. Stewart. The, the dress shop had the number from the police department. Gates. Stolen from where? I don't know. You do know? I don't remember it. It was some chemical company in Los Angeles, a payroll. All right, now listen. Hang up here. Go out to the booth down the hall. When you get to the window, look down the street and yell, there he is. You understand? The back window. Yes, sir. All right, now go ahead. I'm going out the front way. You get them all back here. Remember this. If they get me, I'll get you. Yes, go sir. on. There he is! There he is! Down the street! Martin, bring those men around to the back, quick! A ticket to Los Angeles, please. Yes, ma'am. Department for Los Angeles. Oh, uh, hello, Mr. Gates. Leaving us? Yes, for a while. One ticket to Los Angeles. Yes, sir. Well, new bills. I haven't seen Never any mind new the bills. bills. Give me a ticket to Los Angeles. Yes, sir. Here you are. In just a moment, Alan Ladd, Joan Blundell, and Laird Krieger will return in Act Two of This Gun for Hire. Now, let's look in at a party where the guests are being entertained by that most popular of pastimes, fortune telling. A young lady is listening to hers. Now, let's see. You were born between January 22nd and February 19th. Then you under, are under the sign of Aquarius. That means progress ahead. 
And looking at you, my dear, I'd say it means romance ahead, too. Well, would that all fortunes were as easy to tell as a Lux girl. A girl with the charm of smooth, radiant skin. The kind that makes keen eyes linger and admire. Yes, a lovely Lux complexion makes any woman attractive. And if your skin isn't as fresh, as soft and smooth as you'd like it to be, why not make this test? Try regularly for 30 days the Lux Soap Active Lather Facials that famous Hollywood screen stars use. Here's what they do. Just smooth the creamy active lather well in. Rinse with plenty of warm water, then splash with cold. Pat the face dry with a soft towel. This beauty facial leaves skin softer, flower fresh. Yes, you'll discover this simple Lux Soap Care really works. Active lather, you see, removes stale cosmetics thoroughly. Every trace of dust and dirt. Screen stars say it's like smoothing beauty in to use Lux Soap's gentle, creamy lather. Why not get some fine white Lux toilet soap tomorrow? You'll be delighted with the new loveliness this real beauty soap will give your skin. Now, our producer, Mr. DeMille. Act two of This Gun for Hire, starring Joan Blondell as Ellen, Alan Ladd as Raven, and Laird Krieger as Gates, with Jack LaRue as Michael. Southbound from San Francisco, the night train speeds toward Los Angeles. Helen Graham is on this train, and Willard Gates, and Raven. The girl has been asleep in the coach. When she wakes up, she reaches for her purse, glances through it quickly, and then stares at the man in the opposite seat. Are you that broke? Come on. I know you're not asleep. Hand it over, mister. Hmm? What do you want? You know what I want. My five bucks. It was in my purse, and it was, it was the only five bucks I had. One corner was torn off. I don't know what you're talking now about. Now, look, mister. Don't make me call the conductor. Just hand it over, and we'll forget it. All right. Here. Thanks. I'm no pickpocket. You gotta find somebody in L.A., and I'm sure the cashier wouldn't have taken it. Well, that's too bad. I can break this. You want to borrow a dollar? I'll get along. Well, I... I hope your friend owes you something. No. No, I owe him something. I don't get it. If you're broke, how can you pay him? Oh, I can pay him. He's a fat man who likes peppermints. And you're going to pay a debt with peppermints? Yeah. First I find out who his boss is. Then I pay both of them, see? No, I don't see. Forget it. Yeah, I will. Night. Night. Hello? Hello, long distance. I'm calling Raymond Brewster in Los Angeles. Person. What? Hello, Mr. Brewster. This is Gates. Listen, I haven't much time. I'm in Salinas on my way down. Mr. Brewster, listen. Raven is on this train. I just saw him. I don't know. You better call the police. Tell them to pick him up at the station. They can identify him. He has a deformed left wrist, like it was broken. Yes, he's traveling alone. <laughs> please. Okay. Let me see your left wrist, please. All right, go ahead. Let me see your left wrist, please. Okay. Are you sure you don't want that dollar? I don't need it. That's right. I forgot. You're going to collect from the guy you owe the peppermints to. Yeah. Let me see your left wrist, buddy. Okay. All right. So long. Wait a minute. What's the matter? See those men? The cops. They're looking for me for a job I didn't do, and they're not going to get me. You're going to help. Oh, no, I'm not. Take your coat and fold up in your arms. What for? I'm not... Do what I tell you. Hold up your coat and carry it like we're carrying a baby. Listen, I'm no sucker. Yeah, hear me? Yeah. You can take that gun out of my back. It makes me uncomfortable. All right. Now go ahead. Walk. I'm with you. We're together, see? Okay. 
They won't stop a guy with his wife and kid unless you tip him. Don't. I won't. Don't worry. All right, just look straight ahead and keep going. Let me your left wrist, please. Uh, okay. Yeah. Your left wrist, please. Uh, what is it? Okay. Let's see your left wrist, please. Okay. <laughs> Well, you made it all right. Sorry, I can't have breakfast with you, but I've got a rehearsal. You, uh, you won't be needing the baby anymore, will you? Wait a minute. I got a job to do. Well, you don't need me. Nobody knows you're here. Go ahead. Somebody does know. You know, and I don't like it. What, what are you gonna do? You stick with me for a while, sir. So what for? I want to know where you are. Listen, I'm, I'm not... Taxi! Taxi! Shut up! Taxi! Come back here! Nitrochemical Corporation. Good morning. Mr. Brewster? I'm sorry, but you can't speak to Mr. Brewster just now. He's in conference. Nitrochemical Corporation. Good morning. Just a moment, please. What a bungling idiot, Gates. Oh, Mr. Brewster... I gave you a job to do, Gates. A job involving millions of dollars, and you botched it. I didn't botch it, sir. Here's Baker's letter and the formula. Raven got those, and then you let him slip through your fat fingers. Is that all? Oh, well... There's one thing. I, I don't know whether they're working together or not, but there was a girl on the train with Raven. You said he was alone. I didn't see her until this morning. You know anything about her? She's a performer I just hired for my nightclub. Apparently, you want to commit suicide. I didn't know that when I hired her. And now I'm afraid to turn her over to the police. They wouldn't believe anything Raven said, but they might believe her. You're a fool. Get down to that club of yours and take her out somehow. Find out all about her and get out of here. Yes, sir. <laughs> Ruby. My. Hi, Ruby. Well, swell. When did you get back from Frisco? Oh, this afternoon. You say, is Ellen around? Well, uh, no, she isn't. Well, where is she? She went out to dinner about two hours ago. Two hours ago? I don't get it. Yeah, neither do I. She went out with Willard Gates. Gates? Yeah, that fat wolf. Where'd they go? Well, she didn't say. Well, that's great. That's fine. Thanks, Ruby. <laughs> Mason, are the lights on yet? No, Mr. Gates, I just called the company. The lights are off all over Hollywood. Uh, well, bring some candles, will you, Mason? Yes, Mr. Gates. Cocktail, Miss Graham? No, thank you. You know, Miss Graham, when I was a little boy and it thundered like that, my mother used to say, God is angry at someone. He couldn't be angry at you, could he? Mm, I don't remember breaking any commandments. No, <laughs> you're a very intriguing girl. I want to know all about you. That's a big little word, all. Well, practically all. Have a peppermint. What? A peppermint. Good for the digestion. Try one. Yeah. Yeah, thanks, I will. You know, I looked for you on the train last night. Thought we might be in the same car. I tried the observation car, the diner, the pool. I was in the chair car. Oh, really? Isn't that uncomfortable? Uh-uh, not for an old trooper. That is, of course, unless you're unlucky and your neighbor snores. Were you unlucky? Oh, no. I sat with a very charming old lady. She told me all about her farm in Iowa and how her grandmother came out in a covered wagon, and she said... What's the matter? So you do know him. What? You know him. What are you talking about? You were with Raven on that train. I saw you. What have you got to do with him? He's after me. And you're helping him. He'll use that gun, the gun he used on Baker. Why did you get mixed up in this? I hate violence. But don't think I won't protect myself. Mason! Mason! Yes, sir. I, uh... I'll have to leave now. Oh, no, not yet. I'm sorry, Did but you I... Want uh, sir? Yes, my coat and purse, please. I'm leaving. Is she leaving, Mr. Gates? No, I don't believe she is. Now, get away from me. Get away! Let me go! That'll hold her for a while. What did you do, Mason? I tied her up and put her on the couch. You... You didn't hurt her. Oh, no, never even scratched her. We're a cinch force. In a couple of hours, the bridge over the reservoir will be deserted. And now, look. Don't tell me. I don't want to know anything about it. But this is a work of art. You see, the ropes come off. I tie sash weights to her ankles with soft catgut. Please. 
That's a horrible word. Now get the angle on this. She disappears two weeks, maybe three. Then the catgut dissolves. And she floats up. No marks on her anywhere. A suicide. Now, isn't that beautiful? Oh, it's loathsome. Be sure no one sees you. Don't worry, I'll take the other car. And when they find Don't her... Don't tell me. Okay. It's just between me and the reservoir. I'll wait down at the Neptune until you come. No, oh, I, I wish she had stayed in San Francisco. You know, you're all upset over nothing, boss. Eat a good dinner, it'll calm you down. So, such a lovely young girl. It's revolting. Come to the club as soon as... as soon as you can. Yes, sir, what is it? I want to speak to Willard Gates. Does he live here? Who shall I say is calling? Nobody. Mr. Gates isn't at home. There's no one here but me. Yeah? I'll take a look around. I'm sorry, sir. I can't let you in. Come on, come on. Get out of my way. You can't come in. This gun says different. Oh. All right, now, come on. Back up. Oh, so there's nobody home but you. What's this pocketbook on the table? Uh, Mr. Gates had a guess. She left it there. <laughs> Who's that? Stay out of that room. I'm giving the orders. Open that door there. Listen, you can't walk in here and... <clears throat> All right, sister. Just a minute. There. Oh. oh, I was afraid that gag was, was going to choke me. All right, come on, take it easy. I'll get these ropes off you. Oh, gee, I never thought I'd be glad to see you again. What are you doing here? What's Gates got against you? He saw us on the train. I'm your girl. How'd he catch up with you? I work in his nightclub. Yeah? Where is he now? He went back there to wait. They were going to get rid of me. Yeah? You got a dressing room down there, haven't you? At the club, sure. All right, come on. What for? I want to talk to Mr. Gates alone. Wait, I... Now, look, I... I'm not going to hurt you. You treated me okay, but you do what I tell you. Come on. All right, just keep walking. Go right to your dressing room. Don't speak to anyone. What are you trying to do? I can't help you. Which one is it? This one here. All right, go on in. Oh, here you are. <laughs> Michael. Well, where have you been? Who, who is this guy? Michael, don't. Don't hit him. Watch it, mister. I shoot awful straight. Michael. It's Raven. Do what he says. You stay where you are, mister. I'm leaving and I'm taking her out of here. Raven, huh? Well, there's a dragnet after you, Raven. It won't do any good to hurt her, so use your head. You better stay put. Don't move out of this room until we get clear. All right, sister, back up. Back up! Hello. Hello, this is Crane. Raven just left here. The doorman said he was heading south. Send a call out, but tell him to be careful. He's got Ellen with him. We're right here, Mike. Somebody reported a man and a woman headed toward the gas works. Must be them, all right. Is he in there now? He must be. We've had the whole work surrounded since 10 o'clock. Nobody's come out. How many men have you got? About 20. But there's a lot of buildings and things inside those works. We go in. Oh, no, 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 no. Just watch the outside. We'll have to wait until it's light before we can do much. Well, that's what I figured. Meanwhile, send for a searchlight, just in case he makes a break. Oh, and, and get a sound truck so I can talk to him. Okay. Charlie, call headquarters and get a sound truck. Why don't you let me go? You're going to help me find Gates. If I yelled just once, you know, they'd come in here and get you. Even in the dark. If you do yell, it'll be just once. Okay. Look, I've been thinking. We both took a beating from the same guy, didn't we? Yeah, Mr. Gates. I think I know where he'll be in the morning. Where? Well, you've got to tell me something first. I want to know what you've got against him. I did a job for him. Paid me off in hot money so he could put me where I couldn't talk. What was the job? Well... It's your turn to talk now. But you haven't told me. Your turn now? Where is he? He's a nitro chemical. Thanks. Oh, is that a... Is that a cat? Yeah. Yeah. Hey, cat. Yeah. 
Come here, fella. What's the cat doing in this place? Oh, you're hungry. Yeah, it's hungry. But we, we ain't got nothing for you, Tuffy. Listen, Raven. That's the cops. Raven, I want to talk to you. You're trapped. You can't get out. We're moving in when it's daylight, so we don't want to shoot unless you make it. Come on, I'll talk it over. Raven, do you hear me? Raven! Yeah, I hear you. Is that your boyfriend? Yes. Why don't he lay off on me? I don't want to knock off a friend of yours. He's a policeman, and you're wanted for murder. Yeah. You killed Baker. Gates told me. That's the job you did for him. But who's the man behind Gates? That's what I'm trying to find out. Well, maybe I can help you. You must have some idea who it is. How much do you know about the job you did? Baker was blackmailing the guy behind Gates. He was going to send a letter about him to Washington. He gave it a sweet tooth. What was in it? A piece of paper with some kind of arithmetic on it, a formula, he called it. Like a chemical formula? Now, how do I know? Was the letter going to Senator Burnett? Huh? Yeah, yeah, that was his name. Hey, you know, you know, I'm glad this cat came in here. Cats are good luck. Hiya, fella. You like cats, don't you? Yeah. Yeah, they're on their own. They don't need anybody. Well, this one could do with a friend. So could you. They're trying to make me go soft. Well, you can save your oil. I don't go soft for anybody. Okay. You know, I've been figuring something. That chemical formula. Yeah? I bet I know what they're going to do with it. What? They're selling it to the enemy. So, uh... So tomorrow, maybe they'll ship it back in bombs. Hey, hey, was there somebody else, huh? Listen, do you hear what I said? It's important. This war is everybody's business. Yours, too. Mr. Gates is still eating his peppermints. That's my business. Why don't you stop thinking about yourself for a minute? Well, who else is going to think about me? They're coming in. Keep down and don't move. Hey, Charlie, how'd you like to be worth 5,000 smackers dead or alive? I wouldn't care for him dead. Hey, you hear that? Why? Meowing. Quiet, fella. Oh, it's a cat, so what? Yeah, but what's it doing in there? How do I know? Maybe we ought to go see. Come on, they don't pay off on cats. Anyway, it's stopped. Probably gone by now. Yeah. Hey, you know what I do with 5,000 bucks? What? The first thing I do is run down. You can let the cat go now. They're gone. What's the matter with you? Let it go. Uh, choked it. I couldn't help it. It's dead. It's dead and I kill it. Kill my luck. We pause now for station identification. This is the Columbia Broadcasting System. After a brief intermission, Mr. DeMille presents Alan Ladd, Joan Blondell, and Laird Kriegar in Act Three of this gun for hire. Haven't you often heard people say something like this? I haven't met her, but I certainly like her looks. Yes, we'll consider him for the job. His looks impress me. Yes, looks are important. And as a matter of fact, you can usually tell by a person's appearance a great deal about the qualities of that person. And you know that's true of soap, too. Lux toilet soap, for instance, attracts the eye with its charming, distinctive sampler wrapper. Then when you unwrap it, you notice its whiteness. And if you run your fingers over the fragrant cake, you'll find it smooth and firm to the touch. Lux toilet soap is hard milled, you see. Made to last and last. And you need never worry that Lux soap won't live up to its fine appearance. That smooth, fragrant white cake is a promise of rich, creamy lather. Active lather that's quick and abundant, even in hard water. Lather so gentle, that Hollywood stars say it's like a, a caress on the skin. And they use Lux Toilet Soap daily for their million dollar complexions. Yes, you can trust your precious complexion to Lux Toilet Soap and know 
that you simply can't buy a finer toilet soap at any price. It's pure and mild as only the best of ingredients can make it. And it costs you so little because millions of cakes are sold every year. Nine out of ten screen stars use it. So don't miss out on a real beauty bargain. Get some luxurious white Lux toilet soap tomorrow. Remember, lovely screen stars say... It's a real beauty soap. Here in Hollywood, we've used Lux toilet soap for years. Now, Mr. DeMille returns to the microphone. After the curtain, we'll put our stars on the witness stand. But now, here's Act Three of This Gun for Hire. Starring Joan Blundell, Alan Ladd, and Laird Krieger. With Jack LaRue. The police searchlights play on the steel frame of the gas works. And dark figures roam the outer fringes of the deserted buildings. Somewhere deep in the shadows are Raven and the girl he is holding as a hostage. The killer kneels on the ground, gazing at the limp and silent form of the cat. You got the break, Tommy. I'd like to crawl down there with you and sleep. Why don't you get some sleep? No good. I'd only dream. Every night I dream. I, I read somewhere about a, about a kind of a doctor, a psycho something. If, if you tell your dreams, you don't have to dream it anymore. That's right. You, you wouldn't laugh if I told you, would you? No. Oh, it's, it's a woman. Dream about a woman. She used to beat me. To whip the bad blood out of me, she said. My old man was hanged. My mother died right after that, and I went to live with that woman. My aunt. She beat me from the time I was three till I was 14. One day, she caught me reaching for a piece of chocolate. She was saving it for a cake. A crummy piece of chocolate. She hit me with a red-hot flat iron. Smashed my wrist with it, see? She grabbed a knife. I let her have it. She stuck a label on me. Killer. Shove me in a reform school and they beat me there too. But I'm glad I killed her. Only. Only I don't like to dream about it. Oh, it's the There's nothing I can do about it. There is something you can do. Don't kill anymore. You're just killing her all over again. That's all you're doing. Look. You don't really want to get gay. You don't want to kill him. What do you want me to do? Send him some peppermints? I want you to make him spill the whole works. Who's behind him? Names everything. I want to sign confession. That's more important than killing him. It's important to your country, don't you understand me? Come on, take your hands off of me. No, please. Get away from me. Go on. Go on, get away. All right. All right. <laughs> Are you coming out? Raven, we can see now. You haven't got a chance. Are you coming out? All right, then. We'll come in and get you. Come ahead, Copper. He's right. You haven't got a chance. There's too many of them. Listen. I got a proposition for you. You still want that stuff from Gates? Of course I do. All right, help me out of here and I'll get it for you. Help you? Oh, it was that hot air last night. That flag waving. All right, come on. Make up your mind. Okay, I'll shoot it out with him, and I hope your copy gets the first slug. No, wait a minute. Promise me you won't use that gun anymore. Don't kill. If you promise that, I'll help. All right. It's a deal. What do I do? You go out first, across the yard. Don't run, or they'll know it's a woman. You take my hat and coat. Wait till they spot you, then get under something, stall as long as you can, and come up with your hands up. You want me to go now? Yeah. And hey, wait a minute. You, uh, gonna marry that copper? Yes. Is he the right guy for you? Yes. Okay. All right, go ahead now. Get over that way, man. Straight out, you man. Here we come, Raven. This is your last chance. Are you coming out? Right out, come out. He's coming out, Mike. 
Hold your fire. There he is. He's coming across the yard. Keep coming, Raven. And keep your hands up. He's moving awful slow, ain't he? Yeah, it's funny. Quit the scrolling, Raven. And keep moving. If he drops his hands, Mike, let him have it. Don't take any chances. Stay out in the open, Raven. Raven, get away from that pile of lumber. Hey! He's stuck behind it, Mike. All right, men, close in. Watch out, you men! Careful! Get the tear gas ready. We may have to smoke him out. There he is. He's laying down on the ground. Don't move, Raven. Don't lift a finger. Quick, Ed. All right, Raven. Stick your hand in here. Oh, wait a minute. Come on. Wait a minute. Hey, it's... It's a girl. <laughs> Mike! Oh, Ellen. Ellen. Are you all right? Yes, I'm all right, but listen. Where is he? Where is he? Where did he go? Michael. Don't stall. You're helping him get away. Where did he go? I don't know. Hey, keep the boys moving. Cover his foot of this place. Okay. Now, look, Ellen. What's going on? Are you going to talk? Why did you help him? Where did he go? I can't tell you. Well, use your head, darling. That guy's a killer. How did you meet him? What were you doing with him? I can't tell you. This isn't a cop asking, darling. It's me. He saved my life. Where? At Gates' house. Oh, Gates. What was he doing there? I don't know. Oh, Gates, huh? So that's who he's after. Then he's headed for Nitro. All right, so are we. Hello? Hello, yes, this is Gates. Mason, where are you? Well, have they got him yet? Have they got Raven? Escaped. But they had him surrounded. Well, get down here right away. I need you. Oh, Mr. Gates. One moment. Yes, Mason, I'll be expecting you. Come at once. Well... Brewster wants to see you right away. Oh, yes, I'll I'll be right there. Mr. Gates, what's the matter? Are you nervous about something? Nervous? No, I'll be there in a minute. All right. Hello, Miss Bailey. Yes, sir. Cancel all my appointments. I can't see anyone. Yes, sir. Don't move. <laughs> Miss Bailey. Get away from that thing. Yes, sir. Don't answer. Yes, sir. Throw that key, cut it off. Did you call me, Mr. Get away from that desk. Listen, you... Can't kill me, Raven. I'm not to blame. You you wouldn't kill an innocent man, would you? It's all his fault. I was only acting as his agent. Oh. Mr. Brewster. He's the one. Is he the boss of this outfit? Yes, yes. He, Where is he? In that office over there. All right, come on. I want to see him. It was his fault. He wanted it done, I swear. All right, his... shut up. Open that door. <laughs> yes. Well, come in, Gates. What delayed you? Is that him, Brewster? Yes. What is this, Gates? Who is this man? What do you want? My name's Raven. Raven? Mr. Brewster, the police are outside. Close that door. What? Close the door, I said. Now lock it. Close the door, I said. All right, Gates, you lock the other door. It, yes. What were you saying about the police? They, they're outside. They want to see Mr. Brewster. They will, but not yet. We got business to do. Are you a secretary or something? Yes, I am. Well, sit down and write. Write what? What do you want him to write? The things you're going to tell me, Brewster, so you can sign it. Don't be a fool. Incidentally, you can put that gun down. There's no necessity for it. I'll hang on to the gun. What was in that letter I got from Baker? Letter? Come on, talk. You'll have to tell him, Mr. Brewster. He'll kill you. Shut up. Suppose you tell me, Gates. It was a formula. A secret formula. Baker knew we were making Be it. Be quiet. He was writing to someone in Washington to tell them. Write that down, you. Senator Burnett, huh? Yes. You fool. Are you selling that formula, too? Now, wait. You look like a young man who knows a good thing, Raven. Now, why don't you... Come on, talk. Answer him. Answer him. Tell him. He'll kill you. Stop whining. I'll tell you. The new formula. Brewster sold it to the highest bidder. You've just committed suicide, Gates. You got that down? Yes. All right. Give me the pad. Now, uh, sign, Brewster. I will not sign it. You'll sign. Go on. Wait. Listen. How much do you want, Raven? I'm a rich man. Name your price. Take that pen and sign while you still got a chance. Very well. Very well. All right. Your next case. I'll sign it. I'll sign. Mr. Brewster, put down that gun. <laughs> Mr. Brewster. He's killed himself. He's killed himself. One final double cross. Now that's one out of the way. But you're still left, aren't you, Gates? No, I... I told you. I was only an agent. Believe me, it was Brewster. There's something else. You tried to kill that girl. No, no. That girl's my friend. She's not your friend. She told the police about you. Shut up. They called me up. You lie. Oh, why are they here, then? She told them you were here. I promise I'll never kill again. You're the only one exception. No, no, you can't. I'm innocent. No. Well, here it is, a full confession signed by Brewster and Gates. <laughs> so this was it. This is what you were trying to get, Ellen. 
Yes. Not much use moving this guy, Mike. He's through. Okay. Can I speak to him, Michael? Can I? Sure, go ahead. Is... Is it very bad? No. No, it's kind of nice. Gonna rest now? Yes. Yes. You... You didn't tell the cops I was here, did you? No. Okay. I didn't think so. You know, you know, when they came through that door, the cops, I didn't, I, didn't shoot. I know, I know. Did I? Did I do all right for you? Yes, you did fine. That's, that's good. That's good, I'm glad. Michael. Michael, he's... Come along, darling. Michael. Look. He's... He's smiling. This gun is no longer for hire. But for the kind of acting that makes any audience applaud, we'll bring Joan Blondell, Alan Ladd, and Laird Krieger back for a curtain call. Well, thank you, Mr. DeMille. Last week, you had Dick Powell here. This week, Joan Blondell. Lux kind of runs in the family, doesn't it? If you need a few actors for next week, Mr. DeMille, I have a suggestion. I never have enough of those, Joan. We have two children that aren't working. <laughs> <laughs> Do they take direction well, Joan? I refuse to answer on the grounds that they might be listening. I never know what they'll say when I get home. When I came back from touring the camps in Newfoundland last month, Ellen said to her brother as I came in the door, hooray, mommy's home from war. <laughs> well, Joan, I think this would be a great time for us all to wish Alan Ladd the very best of luck in the adventure he begins tomorrow morning. Yes, by this time tomorrow, he'll be Private Alan Ladd of the United States Army. Thanks, everybody. Give us your address, Alan. We'll write you one of those new V-mail letters. Well, I'll have to wait until I get overseas, Joe. That V-mail certainly is a swell idea for speeding up the mail, Alan. Yeah, and all you need is a special kind of stationery, which you can get free at the post office or buy at any stationery store. Write your letter on this, and then the government photographs it along with a lot of others, others and sends the film abroad. There it's blown up to readable size again. Well, the Army and Navy recommend it because it saves a fantastic amount of cargo space. 1,800 letters converted into V-mail are only about as large as, well, as large as a cake of Lux soap. <laughs> Out of 10 million letters already sent, not one has been reported lost because the original is kept here until the film reaches the other side safely. V-mail is fast, too. It's generally sent by air at no extra charge. Well, let us know when you get to camp, Alan, and, and I'll send you a package. Let's see, uh, I'd better put some Lux soap in it. Everybody likes that. <laughs> Men like the lather, and women like it because it's so kind to their skin. We use it at our house all the time. Uh, confidentially, Joan, uh, we have Lux soap in our house, too. <laughs> Assuming that you haven't got to play the Fitz Jones children for next week, Mr. DeMille, what are you going to have? Next week, lad, well, next week we have a very unusual offering in the Lux Radio Theater and a very unusual star. You've heard of him on this radio program, on his own radio program, and with Fibber McGee and Molly. You've seen him right, in the... Too, <laughs> Thank you. Uh, break it up, boys. Break it up. Hot stuff coming through, coming through. Here, here, here. Just a moment. Well, here I am. Here I am, Mr. DeMille. Hope I'm not late. To be or not to be, that's the question. A horse, a horse, my kingdom for a horse. For just a moment, please. Who are you? Oh, Juliet, wherefore art thou, Juliet? How's that, Mr. DeMille? I think I'm going to be all right in this dramatic stuff. Where's the script, please? When do we begin? Wait a minute. You're, you aren't... You're not... 
Oh, no, you couldn't be. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Yes, I'm afraid you are. Ladies and gentlemen, the great Gildersleeve. Yeah. Well, where's the script, Mr. DeMille? What kind of a part am I playing? Uh, did, uh, did you come here tonight to act? Well, I didn't come here to wash my face, as Lux would have it. Uh, Lux. <laughs> yeah. To be or not to be, a horse. My kingdom for a horse. Oh, wait a minute. Well, wait a minute. I, I, I think I ought to let you in on something, Mr. Gildersleeve. Huh? You are on this program next week. Oh, uh, little early, huh? <laughs> yes, but I've got a great part for you, Mr. Gildersleeve. Oh, something dramatic, huh? Uh, that's my strong point, CB. Heavy drama. The heavier, the better. I see myself as a lover. I hold the heroine in my arms. She looks at me. I look at her. <sighs> I kiss her. I kiss her again, and I smother her face with kisses. Uh, you sure I'm a week early, CB? <laughs> well, don't worry, don't worry. We'll, we'll give you plenty of rehearsal. Rehearsal? Oh, fine. Say, tell me, uh, this part that I'm playing, what is it? Uh, Charles Boyer stuff or Gable stuff? Well, no, it's, uh, it's Gildersleeve stuff. Uh. <laughs> Uh, we're going to give you a part that really fits your personality. Oh. Shy, retiring, unassuming, a shrinking violet. Yes. You're playing the title role in the show-off. Yes. Oh, this is going to be one of my bad days. Good night, CB. <laughs> <laughs> Good night. Good night, Mr. Gildersleeve. <laughs> Good night. Good night. Now, Joan, where were we? You were going to tell us who the star is for next week. Well, uh, something tells me that won't be necessary right now. <laughs> well, let, let me review the facts. Next week, our play is George Kelly's great comedy, The Show Off. And our stars are the great Gildersleeve, alias Harold Perry, Una Merkel, and Beulah Bondi. Well, if I can find a radio wherever the Army puts me, Mr. DeMille, I'll be listening. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night, and good luck to you, Alan. Ladies and gentlemen, this week brings the birthday of the President of the United States. As in recent years, there will be a public celebration of the day, with all proceeds being used in the fight against infantile paralysis. This epidemic disease is a greater enemy than ever in wartime. So won't you join the March of Dimes tonight? Give a dime or a dollar or as much as you can afford and send it direct to the White House in Washington. Our sponsors, the makers of Lux Toilet Soap, join me in inviting you to be with us again next Monday night when the Lux Radio Theater presents the great Gildersleeve, Una Merkel, and Beulah Bondi in the show off. This is Cecil B. DeMille saying good night to you from Hollywood. Starring with Joan Blondell tonight were Alan Ladd, who is currently seen in Paramount's Star Spangled Rhythm, and Laird Krieger, who appears in the 20th Century Fox Technicolor production, Hello, Frisco, Hello. Our music was directed by Louis Silvers, who was also in charge of music for the picture Powers Girl. Heard in tonight's play were Charles Seal as Wilson, Gloria Blondell as Annie, Norman Field as Brewster, and Arthur Q. Bryan, Vicki Lang, Paula Winslow, Jane Bierce, Leo Cleary, Jeff Corey, Fred Mackay, Boyd Davis, and Earl Keane. This is your announcer, John M. Kennedy, reminding you to tune in next Monday night to hear the great Gildersleeve, Una Merkel, and Beulah Bondi in The Show-Off. A word about food shortages. The government says that three out of four of us didn't get enough vitamins and minerals even before the war. Science tells us people who don't get enough vitamins and minerals become tired, nervous, low in resistance. So don't take chances. Take Vim, the amazing low-cost tablets that have the six-vitamin formula doctors endorse. Three vital minerals also. Remember Vim. It's VI for vitamins, double MS for minerals. Get that 
them's feeling. This is the Columbia Broadcasting System.